This is as far as we got in class today, so I want to go ahead and go over um, six and seven. So confidence interval is between one and nine. So I want you to take a minute and go through the same calculations that we did before and figure out what the point estimate is and what the margin of error is. Once you submit your answer and um, pause the video and figure all that out, we'll go over it. All right, so what you should have done is 9 minus 1, which is equal to 8. 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. So 1 plus 4 is 5. My point estimate is 5, and I can tell that's right in the middle between the two. So that's good. The margin of error is plus or minus 4, right? I got the bottom, the lower bound, by subtracting 4, and I got the upper bound by adding 4. All right, my next, and I'll go ahead and put the plus or minus in, um, in front of that margin of error as well. Just good practice. All right, my next confidence interval, it has to do with P, whereas these were mu's, you can tell, and I'll go ahead and write that. You could tell they were mu's because they weren't decimals in between 0 and 1. All right, so the first thing I need, oh, I'm going to give you time to do this one on your own. Input your answers and then come back. All right, so you should have subtracted the two values. So 0.64 minus 0.5 is going to give me 0.14. Now I need to take that number and divide it by 2. You get 0 0.07. So... I'm going to add that to my first value, and I'm going to get 0.57. That's my point estimate that's right in the middle between the two, and it looks like it's right in the middle. And I know that my margin of error is plus or minus 0 0.07, because that's what I add or subtract to get the, um, the lower or upper bound. Next up, we're going to talk about making a decision about a value when you actually have a confidence interval. So confidence intervals, the whole point of them is to let us know what the estimate of the value is, right? So we can make a decision. All right, so number eight. Florida is a major battleground state for the upcoming presidential election. A recent poll shows that 43% of likely voters in Florida plan on voting for Trump. The margin of error is 5%. Do you think it's likely that Trump will end up winning 51% of the vote? All right, so step one is to actually calculate our confidence interval. So our confidence interval includes a point estimate and a margin of error. Our point estimate here is our estimate, right, what we think is going to happen. A recent poll shows that 43%, so remember my um, point estimate needs to be written as a decimal, so 0.43% plan on voting for Trump. The margin of error of that poll is 5%, 0 0.05. That's my lunch, sorry about that beeping. All right, so now that I've got these, I can construct a confidence interval and then make a decision. So I'm going to take my point estimate, 0.43, and I'm going to subtract 0 0.05 to get my lower bound. 0 0.38 is my lowest estimate. 0 0.43 plus point, do that one more time, sorry, 0.43 plus my margin of error, 0 0.05, it's going to give me 0.48. So I'm pretty confident that the true value of um, people who are voting for Trump is in between these two numbers. So to answer the question, do I think it's likely that Trump will end up winning 51% of the vote? Is 0.51 in between these two numbers? No, it's above my confidence interval, right? So it is not likely. that Trump will win 51% of the vote. And I know 
that because of my confidence interval, right? I have a point estimate and a margin of error, so I'm pretty confident that the true percentage is going to be between these two numbers, and 51 doesn't fall in there, so it is not likely. All right, number nine. Miss Hawkins is applying for scholarships for graduate school because she's the most amazing applicant they've ever seen. She is projected to be awarded 98% of the scholarships she applies for with a margin of error of 2%. Do you think it's likely she will be awarded 100% of the scholarships she applies for? All right, so let's do the same thing that we did up here. Let's figure out what the point estimate is. All right, I hope you said 98%, so 0.98, because that's what we projected, right? And then the margin of error is what they tell us it is 2%. So 0 0.02. Remember, we've got to write these percents as decimals. All right, so let's go ahead and create a confidence interval based on these two numbers. So 0.98 minus 0 0.02 gives me 0 0.96, 0 0.96. 0.98 plus 0 0.02 gives me 1, 1.0. Do you think it's likely she will be awarded 100% of the scholarships she applies for? So what is 100% as a decimal? It's 1, right? So is 1 in our confidence interval? It is. It's the upper bound. So yes. It is likely that she will be awarded 100% of the scholarship she applies for. I ran out of room, but you know what I mean. Dot, dot, dot. To be continued. All right. Number 10. Miss Lucas's dog Spencer was diagnosed with puppy cancer, lymphoma, in 2018. The vet told her if they treated Spencer with puppy chemo, he had an expected lifespan of one year after the treatment ends. The vet estimated the margin of error on this lifespan to be approximately six months. Do you think it's likely that Spencer will live for two more years after his chemo treatment ends? All right, so let's get the point estimate. and the margin of error. All right, so what do you think the point estimate is? All right, I hope you said one year. And then the margin of error is six. Wait a minute. I have two different units going on here. In order for me to calculate this confidence interval correctly, everything needs to be in the same unit. So it's easier to do months. So let's go ahead and convert this point estimate into months. So instead of one year, let's go ahead and say 12 months. That way everything's in the same unit. Now we can actually calculate a confidence interval in months for Spencer. All right, so 12 minus 6 is 6, and 12 plus 6 is 18. So this is his confidence interval in months. So the question's asking us, do you think it's likely Spencer will live for two more years? So two years is equal to 24 months. Is 24 within these two numbers? No. So we are going to say it is not likely that Spencer will live for two more years. All right, for those of you that thought I was being morbid, this was actually something our vet told us. So we went through with the chemo treatment and 
they told us to es- to expect for him to live one more year at the most, and he is still alive and kicking. I promised I would show you um, the different pictures of when before chemo and after chemo, so let me get them on my phone. So this was Spencer before we did the chemo treatment, so you can tell he's light. Oops. Now this is Spencer after the chemo treatment. So his, his fur all fell out, and now it changed into a different color, so he's darker. But he's still living, so he beat the odds. So I actually wanted to show you the story because with statistics, we can't say anything for certain. All we can say is what's likely and not likely. The vet told us that it was not likely for Spencer to live for two more years, and yet he's still living, right? That's an outlier. So I just wanted to show you that despite having all these calculations and numbers, there are some cases that are just outliers, right? All right, and the last page. Interpreting a confidence level in context. So we haven't really talked about confidence levels yet. We talked about it briefly with the cartoon when we said that Garfield's weatherman was 100% confident because his interval was so wide. All right, so we're going to use the confidence interval in examples 5 through 7 to answer the following. All right, so we have the average daily confirmed COVID-19 deaths in the U.S., we have a confidence level, or I'm sorry, a confidence interval, and we have a confidence level now. Confidence levels are always in percentages, and they will tell you the confidence level in the problem. So we're going to use this information to write an interpretation. What do these numbers actually mean? Okay, I went ahead and wrote this out while the uh, video camera was paused, so you just didn't see me, my chubby fingers writing. All right, so we are 95% confident that the true average daily COVID-19 deaths in the U.S., is between 764 deaths per day and 1,008 deaths per day. So the interpretation is basically what's, um, we, we try and make these numbers make sense to the population. We're trying to tell our story here. So the interpretation piece is key to statistics. We cannot look over it, we cannot overlook it just because it's not math, right? Interpretation is explaining things. You typically think of that as like an ELA skill. It's also a statistical skill. So we said we are 95% confident, I got the 95 right here, that the true average daily COVID-19 deaths in the U.S., I got that from here, is between 764 deaths per day and 1,008 deaths per day. And this is a sentence stem that you can use for the other problems as well. So let's go ahead and try to do um, number 12 together. So what I want you to do is pause the video and give your best shot at an interpretation and then come back and we'll do it together. Okay, here is my interpretation. We are 90% confident that the true number of months until a coronavirus vaccine is released to the public is between one month and nine months. So look, you see I included my unit after the number just to give more clarification. On the AP exam, when you're taking the AP test, you get points on the free response questions for context. And what context is, is words that tell us what the problem is talking about. So this word months would be context, and you would get a context point for that. All right, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and write your interpretation sentence for the last problem. Okay, here's my interpretation. We are 98% confident that the true percentage of colleges in the U.S. that plan on reopening for face-to-face -face classes is between 50% and 64% of all U.S. colleges. Now, when we're actually talking about an interpretation, we're going to convert the decimal to a percentage so that we can write out our percentage, right? So 0.5 is 50% and 0.64 is 64%. All right. All right, and the last thing I want to do is a brief little graphic organizer on how confidence levels affect the intervals, right? So, how many dashes do I have on this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, I should have done that when I paused the video. <laughs> Not let y'all see me count. All right, so typically, you're going to have a 95% confidence level. That's what's used most often, right? So this would be going up to 100%, and this would be going down 90%. All right, so 95% is 
is usually what statisticians use to create a confidence level. All right, I want you to think about that Garfield cartoon example. We had a 100% confidence level because our interval was so wide. So as our confidence level increases, our interval gets wider. That's because we can be more confident if our interval includes more numbers, right? We're more likely to guess the number correctly if we have a really wide interval. As our confidence goes down, our interval gets smaller. If I really want to try to try and be accurate with the weather report and I say the high is between 70 and 75 degrees, I'm less confident because I have a smaller interval. So as my confidence level goes up, my interval gets wider. As my confidence level goes down, my interval gets smaller.